And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey folks, today we're taking a look at a game called Taverna. This is a game in which you own some taverns, or own a piece of some taverns, and you're trying to get orcs and uh, elves and humans and dwarfs to come up and show and have a good time, and also, uh, you know, kind of show some niceties to the chosen race and different ways of scoring. Let's take a look. So here's the board made up of different taverns. Now this is the four to five player board. The two to three player board is the other side. It basically has fewer taverns and fewer spots. There are some dignitaries here. These are placed in the different taverns and the VIP spots. At the beginning of the game, players can buy, or do they have to buy, two shares of the different um, taverns. So when you look at a tavern at the end of the game, or actually during the game, you get points for owning a share in a tavern. So if I bought, for example, this one, if I paid six coins, I own that tavern, and that gives me three shares in the tavern. So that's one way to get points over the course of the game. You can buy more shares. On a player's turn, and there's only a few rounds in the game, uh, on a player's turn, they're going to look at the people cards that are available here. Now, there are different people in this game, humans, dwarves, elves, and orcs, and those four different people... Uh, one of them is going to be the king's chosen people. That's the first one drawn. So in this game, the first one drawn uh, was a human. So over here, we put a ring around the human to show that the human is the chosen race. And that matters for endgame scoring. So I pick one of these. So let's say I take this guy here. If I take this person here, I can choose whether I want a dwarf or an elf. This one can be either or. But let's say I pick this person here. They're going to be replaced for the next person's turn. And then I'll take a token that matches that person, a human. And then I can put them in any tavern I want. Any table I want. Now probably what I want to do is place them in a tavern with a matching table. Because if I do that, they can sit at any table. But if they, put, if they go to a tavern with a matching table, then I'm going to move up one on the track of that people. Those people like me more. And as you move up here on the different tracks, there's rewards. This one gives you points, gives you money, gives you spells, and this one gives you privilege tokens. Also, depending on the card that you played, like for example, this guy here has a book, and I look at the end and, and also has a book, that means I get to draw a spell card for having put that person there. Also, whoever has the owns shares in this inn is going to get three coins for that from that person going there. So there's these different things you're thinking about. You're thinking about, do you match a table? Who's going to get money from you sending it there? Do the symbols match? And then also, if one of the special royal patrons is in that tent, tavern, you can, will move them to another tavern, and you can take a special ability. One of them allows you to take some of these royal favor tokens in the middle, depending on how much money you spend. And when you spend that money, you can take up the three of them. Uh, you can use these in the future as one shot. This lets you move someone off a table. This lets you add a symbol to the card you just played. Uh, another one allows you to get some victory points in the game by spending money and then basically adding a, another symbol to one of the ends of your choice. Not only will that give you points when you put it there, but that symbol is there so when players play a matching card, like for example, this one is the beer. Whenever I put a patron who has beer on them and there's beer in the tavern, I get three coins for doing that. There's the, the lyricist here, or the harp. If I put the harp in a spot where there is a harp, then I can use any of these fancy patrons no matter where they are. And there's also the mask. This one doesn't need to match it in. But if I have a mask, I can basically unseat someone at a table and go to their spot. So you can add these in. Another patron allows you basically to buy more shares in the inns, which gives you points and also can give you more money. And the last patron allows you to basically spend money to move up on the people tracks over here. And so that's the way the game's going to go. Now, there are these spell cards. These cards are cards that 
you have over the course of the game. Each of these cards has money costs, and they let you do someone else. Target player must choose another consumer customer card that's played on someone else's turn. Uh, here, you immediately get two points for each customer card with that symbol on that you've played so far. Here, immediately get a privilege token for each two taverns you own that have the harp symbol on them. Uh, here, you immediately get one point for each tavern you have that has a book symbol. Here, you can cancel someone else's spell. These all have costs on them, and you can play them. This one here, you don't have to play with. It's a curse. If you get this, you lose three points at the end of the game, but whenever you play a spell, you pass it to the next person. So you can play with that one in a deck or not. Another thing is, if you fill up the last table in an inn, you get these privilege tokens. Now, privilege tokens are worth a point at the end of the game, or you can play two of them to activate any dignitary. Usually you want to do that because you're basically giving up two points. After everyone has taken eight cards, and that's eight full rounds, the game is going to end. At this point, you're going to look at this track here and see who is the highest on the chosen people's track. Only one person can go to the top spot, so someone will likely win, or else you go with the person who's on top. You're going to get points for however many people are on each of your tracks here. 10, 7, 4, 2, 1, 0, minus 1 point, minus 3 points. So you're going to score those points wherever you are. But whoever is the highest on the privileged people's tracks is going to pick one more method of scoring. Once they've picked that method of scoring, we'll put like basically uh, something there to show that they've used that method. No one else can use that. Then the second highest picks another method. So this one gives you five points and moves you up one on each track in the people's favor. This one gives you up to 15 points, depending on how many taverns you have own a piece of. This one gives you points for money. This one gives you points for spells that you cast over the course of the game. And this one gives you points for however many of these tokens that you've taken. So you can get up to 15 points on these. You'll add that, plus the points you get from the people's tracks, plus any points you've gotten throughout the course of the game. Most points is the winner. Okay. Well, this game is a fun game. I enjoyed playing it. There's a lot of things going on. If there's one flaw in the game, well, maybe, okay, there's first the minor flaw of, really, dwarves, humans, elves, orcs, yawn. I, I don't know. I mean, this whole fantasy thing is starting to get as tired as trading in the Mediterranean. Just seeing the same stuff over and over again. The art is good, the board is beautiful and looking, but the theme is just so generic. It's, I mean, you could have, I guess, yeah, since you have the magic spells, you have to keep it fantasy, but I don't know. Anyhow, taking that out, the other problem with the game is the fact that there's a lot of things to keep track of. When I go to a table, I need to say, okay, does the table match the color? Yes. Is it the last table in the tavern? Who owns a piece of this tavern? What special abilities are there at the tavern that I can move somewhere else? And keeping track of those, plus spells that people play, seems like it's not that difficult of a task, but it really is. There's really a lot going on. And I think some people won't like that. The game will feel just the slightest bit fiddly to those folks. Um, I, I didn't mind that as much, but I found that usually your choices were not as broad as it might seem. Like, well, I can put this guy anywhere. No, nah, I probably want to put him at a matching table, because why would I not want to point him people? And I, if there's a matching table with a tavern that I own, of course, that's the place I want to place him. And if that's not the case, then I'll go to a place where there's a patron that I want to use. And so you kind of have like this little decision tree, which is nice. And sometimes you have to weigh the option of two others, and you're also helping other people out. Do you want to get a bunch of taverns, own taverns? You can kick other people out of taverns. They don't lose points, but they lose that possible money in the future. Uh, what kind of people are you going to bring in? Are you going to bring in people that give you money or are you going to get spell cards? But the way the whole game is so intriguing is that final scoring. That king's favor track. Now, if you play two players, there's two tracks. A king's favor track and a queen's favor track because you scored twice and whoever's higher on both of them. But just being high on that one's important because at the end of the game, you're, they're going to pick one of the scoring. So I might decide I'm going to try to get a lot of money. That's a way to get points. But if someone else picks that scoring before me, I can't do that. So if I look and I'm getting close to the end of the game and I'm like, hmm, I'm going to pick scoring third. All right, well, what am I going to pick here? And when you pick your scoring at the end, you want to pick something that helps you, but also you want to, if possible, rob someone who's picking after you of a scoring that will help them. And that's not the, that won't win you the game as much. It, I mean, it, it, it very well has a possibility, but moving up on those people tracks, that has uh, a good chance of winning the game too. So there's kind of a lot going on. There's, and the points you get over during the course of the game aren't nothing. 
This game is deeper than it looks. It looks really simple. And they're like, oh, it's a little fiddlier, but okay, I can live with that. And then you're like, oh, there's actually some strategy here. And I enjoy that. If there's one thing I do not like about the game, it's that stupid curse card. Uh, throw that out of the deck, rip it up or whatever. It's just not worth it because honestly, whoever has it on the last turn can quick cast a spell and give it to somebody else who's already gone. And that person loses three points, which in this game could be the, the difference between winning and losing. So I like it. Uh, you know, I wish the theme wasn't so generic, uh, but you know, if you, there is something to be said for Taverns and Fantasy, but it does offer some unique things. And I love that pick what kind of scoring you're gonna do at the end of the game. That elevates the game a little bit higher than I normally would. But enough choices in this game to make it an interesting light strategy game. That is Taverna. Dice Tower Judgment approved. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Shut the door.